Hi English students, at this point we need to look at the literary analysis essay. This type of essay analyzes a literary work by picking an aspect, so that could be a theme, tone, character, symbolism, etc. and illustrating an argument for the reader using textual evidence, so that could be dialogue and or a description provided by the author. The writer should assume that the reader has read the work. So not too much plot summary or this happened, then this happened, then this happened. It should read more like true analysis where you're delving into what you believe happened in the story and why it's significant. The writer will prove a point without too much plot summary. If a part of the plot is summarized, it is to make a point for the overall argument. So you're using part of the story as evidence for your argument versus it reading like spark notes summary where it's um, this happened and this happened and this happened. It shouldn't read like you're literally just recounting the story. Um, and a, one of the metaphors I like to use is imagine that you and your friend have watched the same movie and you're leaving the theater together and you're sharing your thoughts on that movie. So it's similar where the reader has read the story. You don't have to recount exactly what happened. You can just start off knowing that they already know the same information you do, but you're explaining your interpretation of that information. So for this particular paper, it's Edgar Allan Poe's The Cask of Amontillado. For that metaphor, it was just a theoretical movie. So you're essentially, um, the writer will prove a point without too much plot summary. If a part of the plot is summarized, it is to make a point for the overall argument, like I explained, as evidence. Um, the use of AI to write the essay is forbidden, and students are not allowed to reuse any essays from previous courses, just in case you covered the story in a previous class. Um, do not be tempted to reuse your essay. Um, just go ahead and start with an original essay that's your own work. This rough draft is due Wednesday, October 2nd by midnight in the week seven discussions, which will be on peer review, just like we've done for the last two essays. And then the final draft will be due Monday, October 7th by midnight in the week eight module. And then this paper is worth 20% of your final grade, so more than that descriptive narrative, but not quite as much as the research paper. The length for this essay, essay should be between 500 and 750 words in length. Of course, if you go over 750, that's all right. I don't count off, but I certainly don't want you to turn in a 1,000 or 1,500 word behemoth because it could be that you've done extra work unnecessarily. Um, so try to stick to that range. Formatting is the same as always. It's 12 point times your Roman font, double space with MLA heading and style. And the below are topic ideas based off Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Cask of Amontillado. So if you've not read the story yet, it's in your week six module. There's a link to it. Um, pause here and come back because I'm about to plot spool when I'm explaining these topics. So just make sure you've read the short story. It takes about between 10 to 15 minutes to read it. So you could focus on the themes in the literary work. So of course, revenge is a major theme for this short story. It literally begins, I vowed revenge. And so, and we see how that plays through the story. Um, there's also this idea of betrayal because he is technically Fortunato is a friend of Montresor's. And so he does ultimately betray him. So if you wanna delve deeper into that theme, you could. Um, but if you're choosing themes, you could choose three themes and that could help guide those three body paragraphs. That would be a, a easy way to organize your ideas. Tones the author utilizes. So this is a classic Poe story. Um, for those of you that have read previous uh, Edgar Allan Poe stories, um, like The Raven, The Fall of House of Usher, The Telltale Heart, they all have the same tone. It's really dark and macabre and really mysterious and you don't know what's gonna happen. He usually does a lot of twists and turns in a story, um, but you could argue what elements of the story convey tone. The setting itself is really dark and spooky and mysterious. They're literally walking through catacombs that are covered in bones and cobwebs and um, it's really dark. They can't quite see what's ahead, which is a nice metaphor for what happens to Fortunato. He can't see his future. And then also you could um, add in some of the dialogue that sets the tone, um, pull some quotes from Montresor or Fortunato that help convey that tone. But essentially you're using elements of the story to convey how this tone is communicated. Foreshadowing simply means that the end is hinted at. Authors like to put little hints throughout their stories to let the reader know, hey, this is coming up. 
hey, this may happen. <laughs> Essentially giving you little um, hints along the way. So, of course, this story is no different. Um, Poe put in multiple dialogue pieces, like, for instance, when they toasted and he said, I um, toast to your long life. And it's because he wanted Fortunato to suffer in the catacombs. Um, also, I shall not die of a cough. True, true. Um, he knows how he's going to die. He's already premeditated his murder. He knows it's not going to be of a cough. And so there's instances like that where Poe almost heavy-handedly hints on how he's going to die. Um, also, the trowel, that little shovel that he references, becomes a murder weapon um, because he uses it to um, use brick masonry to wall him up. And so there's so many instances, even the way that he sent the servants away at the very beginning when he said, um, I had made sure that we were alone. And... Um, the carnival, I mean, the whole situation, there's so many hints of, you know, Fortunato's not going to make it out of this. You just don't know quite how um, it's going to all go down. So, but if you wanted to do three examples of foreshadowing, that could be a way to organize your ideas on this. Protagonists and antagonists. So protagonists are simply heroes and antagonists are villains. Um, some students like to do almost like a character analysis of Montresor or Fortunato, depending on which character is more interesting to you. You could delve into maybe the mentality of each because we do, um, because of the first person narrator, like literally Fortunato and Montresor are only two characters, but Montresor is the one we get the perspective from. Um, I vow revenge. It's all done from his perspective. And so you could delve into the mind of the murderer and what kind of person you think he was based off this text. Or you could get into um, Fortunato. We don't get his perspective, but um, you could, you know, he's obviously not the best guy. He's prideful. He's an alcoholic. He's obviously not um, caring much about his future. Um, also, some have argued that this story is a metaphor for alcoholism because he willingly goes to this catacomb. He willingly goes to try the Amontillado. The Amontillado is the wine um, that Montresor keeps tempting him with. It's essentially bait. And he willingly walks to his own demise. And that's honestly addiction overall, but especially alcoholism where people will willingly um, make choices, continue drinking to an extreme to where it literally can ruin their lives. So, um, yeah, you could get into either of those characters, but depending on which one's more interesting to you, you could choose accordingly. Symbolism simply means that an item represents an idea. So traditionally, flowers symbolize love, skulls symbolize death. There's some of those universal um, symbols, and those are present in the story. We've got skulls and bones in the catacombs because it's where the family crypt is as well. Um, it's not only where they store the wine, but it's where they store their family members. Um, historically in Europe, they kept full crypts underneath their houses. And so the bones themselves, of course, are symbolic of death. Um, the Montiato could be symbolic of alcoholism, temptation, um, addiction, whatever, essentially, the interpretation you want to take away from the Montiato. Um, the trowel itself was symbolic of the murder weapon. So um, not, not everything is as it seems. A shovel isn't just a shovel. Um, the family crest, some students miss this part. Did you notice that the Montresor family crest was a snake biting into a heel? And, um, no one hurts me without impunity, essentially, is the, um, Latin phrase translated. So, what symbols are in that? Of course, the snake itself biting into the heel is symbolic of revenge, symbolic of retribution for an action. And that's exactly what Montresor is doing with Fortunato. But you could choose three symbols that stood out to you and delve into what they're symbolic of and how it helps with the story and adds that complexity. So, of course, these are several topics, but if you need help choosing your topic, let me know because this may be your first literary analysis paper. So I'm certainly happy to guide you through this. And don't forget, we have a great writing center who can help as well. The final draft late submission rule is the same as always. It's 10 points off every day late for that final draft. So just make sure you turn it in punctually. 
all of your final drafts will be graded using that 101 grading rubric that is attached in your modules as well as in the start here section under policies and documents, I believe. Um, and then it's going to be scanned with anti-plagiarism software. So just make sure that your paper is your paper. And I have a section for brainstorming and outlining for those of you that like to write out your ideas before you get started. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'm happy to answer those questions and have a fantastic day.